All right, so uh, let me just welcome once again, everyone. Uh, so uh, dear participants, as you know, I'm Rashmi from Great HR and today's moderator of this session. And uh, as uh, you also know, this is our 47th Ask the Expert webinar Pariche. And we have today come up with very interesting topic that is HR in 2023, people first, inclusive culture and modern HR. Uh, but before I dive into the topic, let's do a little housekeeping on how the session goes. Uh, so as usual, the session is divided into two parts, uh, wherein in the first part, we will have a discussion about our today's topic with our uh, expert, Ms. Chandra Datta, which is then followed by audience Q&A. Uh, well, audience Q&A is where I can say time is all yours, participants. Uh, you can put across your questions, uh, anything related to our discussion today in the Q&A option of the Zoom control panel, and we will be happy to take it up during the Q&A session. All right. And also, if you're worried about missing out on any part of our today's session, don't worry at all. Uh, currently, we are recording the session. The same will be shared with all of you once we are done. All right. So now, without any further delay, let's start this session then. Uh, so the recent few years have transformed the HR industry. All of us agree with this, right? The traditional ways of working have now taken a back seat and new inventions, tools, and technologies are driving the force. There's a major focus on employee experience now more than ever. So organizations are working towards building a workplace which is rich in DIV. Right. So it's all about people first, inclusive culture and modern HR. Uh, this is what the focus is going to be this year. So now the question comes up, how can organizations prepare for the same? Uh, I mean, to say, like, what kind of strategies should they be working on in order to build a psychologically safe and tech rich workplace? So in the next one hour, we are going to discuss all this in length with our expert, uh, Ms. Suchantra Datta, Senior Manager, HR India Lead, Alif Semiconductor, and understand how the HR has got to play the role here and what it is going to be in the year 2023. All right. Uh, well, before that, let me tell you a little more about uh, uh, Ms. Suchantra. So Suchandra is an alumnus of her school of business, University of Berkeley, with nearly 15 years of strategy, consulting, program management, and practitioner experience in the areas of human resource. As a senior HR leader, uh, she has um, hands-on experience of leading different HR functions uh, like HR business partner, compensation and benefits, competency development, HR tech, recruitment and policies, uh, policies uh, with leading global organizations such as AstraZeneca, Novozymes, Alcatel Lucent. She is a dynamic leader and capable of analyzing alternatives and identifying tough choices while communicating the same. Uh, she is also experienced in working with global cross-functional teams and implementing global projects in HR. So, uh, Ms. Chandra, we are so excited to have you here in the session. Once again, a warm welcome to you. Thank you so much, Rashmi. I am also excited to be part of Parisha once again. And it's always a pleasure to be on this forum and discuss so many things about the nuances of HR, the changing environment of HR, and open to any conversations and questions after we finish the session today. Sure, uh, glad to hear that. So then let's start off with our first part then. Uh, so uh, Ms. Chandra, to start off with, uh, what are the HR trends that you see dominating this year? Uh, well, I think we started off this year talking about HR trends uh, in your great HR, uh, the physical need that we had, right? And uh, well, to continue from there, um, I think the what we are looking forward to and expected is definitely a uh, focus on employee well-being, right? I think this has been the topic over the last two years, and uh, it is not going to go down. It's only going to increase in the focus because as um, you know, as an, as organizations are changing the way the they are working, uh, going to a complete remote hybrid, then again, trying to 
getting people back to offices is everybody is trying to balance you know uh, the employee well-being factor over here because we are more concerned about employee burnout. We are more concerned about the productivity and trying to keep everything in place. So our focus is going to be again on employee well-being, uh, more new, newer approaches to managing and you know doing employee well-being for sure. Uh, the next will be in terms of the way that we have been doing hiring of late, right? Uh, we have seen that you know in the in this year typically from the end of 2022, we have started seeing the massive layoffs and uh, we have seen the churn that has been happening in the industry. That also makes us wonder how are we doing our hiring. So you will see that we are going to move to a lot of skill-based hiring because the need for good talent will always be there, right? So we will be, companies will be looking at hiring for skills rather than for degree. So I just was reading a report, um, you know, last uh, few days back, which says that we are already the hiring skill based hiring is already up by 63% in the past year. As employers are valuing more experience over your academic qualification. So, so this is also going to be a trend. And we will also be looking at upskilling employees, because when we are looking at hiring in, uh, externally, we are also going to look at how do we upskill and develop people internally as well as we move on, right? Because there will definitely be a lot of cost pressures going to come into the picture. Companies are already facing it, but we need to also be able to deliver to our existing clients and also get new clients on board. Uh, and another uh, area of focus will be the future of work will be flexibility. Now, when we talk about flexibility, it doesn't mean giving hybrid and our remote options only. Flexibility also will, you know, will be broadening in, in the spectrum, in the definition that we are looking at. Uh, already a lot of countries have already implemented where you have a four day work schedule where the people can choose the days or the number of hours also that they are going to work for. They're trying to create a work-life balance. Um, so people are choosing their well-being, their comfort uh, over, you know, the usual traditional way of working. So how much of flexibility an organization can give to their employees? Uh, are we going to practice, you know, shorter work hours? Are we going to give that flexibility to choose the days you would like to work from, from office in a hybrid model or the days that you would like to come or the number of hours or even the timing and the duration? As we uh, are going more global, and every organization has offices across the globe also, like, you know, in a larger MNC. And I can give an example of our organization itself. So whenever we have this discussion, we say we are connected globally across, right? We are, we are focusing on a product side development and we are flexible in the way that we work. People have an opportunity to work across the globe, different teams and time zones and everything. Whatever is suiting the employees, Productivity, I will say, which will focus on that. So flexibility will come into the picture a lot more. I think Indian companies, it will still take some time, whereas a lot of European companies, um, which keep the employee first, have already brought in into, you know, in, into their um, organizations. I think one more interesting uh, area that we would be looking for is um, a kind of a blended workforce. And we have been seeing it over the last few months also. I mean, it's from last one year as well. <clears throat> uh, humans and bots will be coming together to create a more blended workforce. Now, when we talk about it, we are already implementing it. Every organization has some kind of an HR chatbot, right? Replacing the human. They are supporting us in our day-to-day -day work. They are supporting us um, in, in terms of uh, the queries of the employees, handing a lot of things that we are now seeing on the right. So, uh, what we will start seeing is that uh, the blended workforce will not be a combination of only full-time, part-time or gig workers, but a lot of work will also move into the automation, which will be through the HR chatbot, AI, and it will be a blended workforce, which will be the future of 2023 and beyond. Um, anything else? Anybody would like to ask or any questions on this? Or we will reserve the questions for uh, the later part. Uh, I think uh, we will take them up uh, later. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. 
Uh, also, Suchandra, uh, you brought up some important uh, aspects like uh, the skill set. Uh, your, your voice is breaking up a bit. Okay, let me just check. Uh, is it any better, Suchandra? Yeah, yeah, this is better. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, uh, so I was just saying that uh, you have brought up very uh, important aspects uh, that's going on now in the HR industry, right? Like uh, the hiring in terms of skill set, the flexibility of work, all of this, right? Uh, that too, given this key hybrid setup is what works for many organizations today. Mm -hmm. So now yeah. the challenge comes here is about how can organizations track and maintain the employee productivity in a hybrid setup? So what is your mm -hmm. take on this? I think the, most of the organizations are uh, already done those, uh, you know, the systems in place for tracking and measuring productivity and performances in a hybrid, set, hybrid setup. We went remote. Uh, completely in uh, the, the COVID times. And uh, we started implementing those tools and processes during that time itself. Uh, but as we, uh, I think we have, as, uh, as people, as employees, we have all gotten used to taking ownership right now, right? But still, if and if still the organizations are looking at, uh, you know, how they can enhance it. I think the first thing is, use of as much of technology as possible. This will not, otherwise it is not going to be possible, you know, at all possible to manage employee productivity and performances. Uh, so one of the key strategies um, remains in a, uh, in a hybrid setup is to maintain productivity is to set very clear expectations and goals for employees. I think this, is, this has always been there. But this becomes all the more important now that we work in a hybrid or a remote setup. And when we talk about setting clear expectations and goals, doesn't mean that um, it is going to be like at the beginning of the year, you set up and you forget it for the rest of the year. Most of the co companies are now moving to short-term goals. They are doing OKR. They are doing various different ways of tracking performances and different KPIs and metrics. Companies are becoming more metric-driven, right? And target-driven. So it's very important that if you want your productivity to be high or your performance to be high, your employees to be more engaged as well, you need to start having a very detailed, clear thought job description and also outlining the deliverables that is expected from each and every employee. So basically you start off with capturing your higher goals uh, of the business at the organization level. You break it up in very minute levels Till an employee's roles, it, you know, it needs to be tracked with your employee's roles, responsibilities and deliverables, and give those metrics to the employee. Just don't put in a goal that you are going to achieve it. But when you are achieving that goal, what is the metric for measuring your outcome? That's important, right? I, it's gone on those days where like my manager is going to just rate me on my performance. You are a good, outstanding, meet expectations and all. It's more now metrics driven. So it's very important that Organizations start looking at their business goals, deliverables, outcomes in a very metric oriented way. So once you do that, it's more easy to have your employees more focused and productive. So that's uh, one way of looking at it. That's one part of it. And obviously the next is um, regular feedback and communication. I think communication has become all the more important. Regular communication, feedback processes that you are building it into your system is important. Uh, one on one chat, we have started, you know, using a lot of HR chatbots also from the for the communication and for the listening purposes of what is employee feeling, what is employee needs are and everything. So this all helps us in ensuring that the employees are productivity is high because employees feel that somebody is listening to me and hence will give you the right kind of feedback. Um, they will also be also be very aware that I am being tracked as well. I cannot escape. If I'm a bad performer, it will get caught. I cannot sit in the organization for one year and in the end I can do a job and have a recency effect in my, with my manager anymore, right? It is a continuous process. You have to keep on delivering and performing on a regular basis. So I think that's, that's very important part of it. 
and as i mentioned in the beginning that you need to understand what kind of tools and technologies you need to use for ensuring that you have a high productivity and performances because it will help even the managers it's not only about hr but from an organization perspective when you are using platforms like you know a um, lot of companies have introduced time tracking software in a hybrid model to ensure that are the employees uh you know spending proper time allocated on the laptop especially with the remote organizations and we did have that concept of you know the whole thing about phone lighting and other things coming up so i think with this lot of things uh you know coming into the picture companies are also becoming more focused on using whatever the latest tools and technologies are there project management tools lot of collaboration platform um i think the use of uh, your a uh, slack use of your teams and other kind of communication instant communication uh, pages is is more in uh, you know in popularity at least in the tech organization that we have seen because we are we are more tech oriented lot of uh, your uh, traditional organizations companies are also moving towards technology i'm sure um, that we have seen that rise also happening in uh everybody everything is on an app based so everything that you need employees are being given on an app based right from the way you do your leave management right the way you want to kind of you know give feedback everything is at your fingertips so this all these tools can provide you valuable insights in how your employees are spending time identify the bottlenecks and also uh highlight inefficiency in processes if it's there it will help the managers also when you are doing a project tracking time tracking and everything uh to you know manage your resources effectively change the course of direction of what where you want to be or how you want to achieve a certain project and the timelines and the deadlines um uh, in an in an hybrid setup <clears throat> Sujinda, so, thanks for sharing your insights on this. Uh, I would like to just uh, uh, build upon that. Uh, so, in that case, what are the HR strategies that we can incorporate to improve the employee experience and engagement? Well, I think we um, improving employee experience and engagement has been a continuous process, um, and I think with the changes that is happening right now. the what is the definition of employee experience is also changing correct so if you look at it what we used to think about employee experience in pre covid days or whatever i mean let me even never two years back also if you think about it it was more in terms of how the employees uh you know feel engaged at work in a physical place in the office environment are we having enough uh, meetings outings appreciations and everything right now the whole concept of employee experience is changing the way that we are talking about it now employees needs are different they are not looking at higher you know obviously salary and packages are important but they are more looking at what is it from terms of the work content that the organization is giving me does the organization have the right set of policies to engage with me or not do they have the benefits that i need right so i think it's very important for every organization to enhance employee experiences to keep evaluating your uh, not only the compensation packages but the other benefits that you are giving are you a company who put mental health men, employee wellness first or it is just like anything another tick box in your you know in your charter of things that you would like to do you just go ahead and pick up anything do you really cater to the fact that your employees uh, are getting burned out are you able to acknowledge it are you able to listen to those feedbacks or not right uh, do you have a very clear plan of their career development and growth or or how does it work in your organization so i think those those is that is very important then how as an organization what is the steps have you taken to encourage open communication and feedback between your managers and the employees uh in especially when we talk about again the remote setup right uh do you do it via zoom call do you have a way of engaging with people do you have a way of uh the listening skills that is needed in a remote environment to actually listen to what 
the employee and the manager are uh, discussing uh, do you are you able to gather those feedback from the people and take those analysis or not are you an organization which are you able to promote the diversity because today we are also talking about a lot about diversity inclusion and equity right is your organization able to bring in diversity equity and inclusion in its proper context within the organization or not what are the steps that you are doing are you doing are you have you have programs to bring in back uh, you know women employees on break into the organization do you have any program to upskill them or reskill them and put them back into the workforce or not so all these strategies all this focus will in, enhance your employee experience it is not only internally but also what we are doing attracts your talent from the market as well employee experience doesn't start internally actually it starts when they are still outside and is looking at you as a prospective employer so what are we are doing how we are engaging with our both internal and external audience or our talent is very important to build that entire employee experience uh, you know factor over here and then the obviously i mean i think we we keep on doing it a lot how do you foster in the sense of community and belongingness within your organization is it through team building or do you have uh you know because we did go away from that whole uh, de facto physical meeting and social events and everything and we are bringing it back so, you know in now that we are mostly you know even even a hybrid model as well we do have those days wherein we want people to you know we actually say that hey you we need you to come to the office today because we want to meet you in a physical space we want to engage with you we want to talk to you so those also kind of makes employees feel that hey i you know there is a sense of belongingness that we are fostering and also i feel as a smaller organization it is mostly for smaller organization is how your top management communicates to everyone in the organization that the direct line of command does it percolate down to the bottom employee as well or not i think those those are very important way of uh uh you know looking at how do you improve this whole employee experience and engagement in today's context so so i just say then i think there are many alternative yeah am i audible to you yeah yes 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 okay yeah there is a power cut please bear with me today <laughs> no problem not an yeah. issue uh, so what is Uh, so in other words if we have to say i think uh, for people there are many other alternatives to earn money and pay their bills right but what is very important is it is not only about whether employees are good enough to work at your company but also about whether your company is good enough for them right absolutely so yeah you i think you have put it in a very wonderful way thank you uh, suchindra for that uh, with this i'll also move on to our next uh, uh, question uh, just sometime back uh, in about the outcome the metric oriented outcome the performance mm -hmm. evaluate on that uh, so uh, can you please tell us like how can organizations evolve by focusing on data and uh, people analytics um see uh, i think if you look at data um it was never kind of a data driven if you look at maybe 10 years back and all our data was only the employee data payroll data and all and everything but the whole context has shifted right now i think data is there for everything right now um whether it is hr marketing sales finance the organization eat breathe data and turns out data i will say correct organizations are taking and building data lakes across uh wherein and and with the advent of uh, the technologies of ai ml you will be able to farm those data and put it into any context you want so data has become very valuable for every organization now when we talk about how organizations can evolve focusing on your data and people analytics let's understand what is what how to what is people analytics actually you know 
when we talk about people analytics um it is mostly uh, you know using people talent and organizational data to gain the certain insights when when you can make some informed decisions about what will be your people strategy which will advance your businesses correct now obviously we have been collecting and assessing lot of type of data previously and we used to like you know mostly terminate term it as an hr analytics or talent analytics workforce basically only from the hr database now when we come to a uh, peep analytics the scope becomes much wider for us because we are also not looking at additional sources of data coming into the picture like from finance uh, from marketing from customer data and uh, it it adopts also a comprehensive you know characterization of who makes up the workforce and what they have to offer so now hr has the ability to integrate like all of this data and build their people strategy basically more an organization to have you know move towards a more fuller people experience it is not only about your full time employees but categorization of all kind of people that is working for you right right from uh, like you know right from you should say that we used to view people as uh, workers as like you know we're just a number or like a tool for getting work done we used to say hey you uh, hr will give data for a department like so many people in your department this is your gender ratio uh, this is your experience ratio this is your cost ratio now we can go much more wider into that and talk about where are your people coming from what are the skills that they have map those skills um if if it's like from a customer we can map a person to a customer's needs and everything and provide insights for business right so i think when when we look at data and people analytics combined together and when we do it we we can do a lot of strategies right like one of the most important way is like we are always looking at how do we nurture talent how do we do employee retention right so when you start understanding what is making an employee leave an organization with the help of your your people strategy can be and your data can be built around understanding that data and nurturing people for retention program right uh you can use this data that you have uh to understand what does actually uh skills that you are looking for for your business growth what skills people already have what is your newer skills that is needed and you can build your lnd programs learning and development experiences and make the people feel like they belong that means that i am really care, you know catering to their uh, personal growth and professional growth as well uh you can we can also look at uh, the data to increase or uh, understand the workforce load today so you are say for example in a, like a small nutshell you are looking at uh, implementing a project right you are looking at how many people is actually needed uh, uh, you might want to see that the workforce load a uh, higher output growth in a small time you will need highly talented set of people to bring into that project rather than lot many people so you can analyze through your if you have all the right set of data of your people you will be able to put together a very high end fast fast performing team and get greater customer satisfaction and results from there correct so obviously there is always a lot of um, you know you can focus on the employee productivity that we have been talking about how you uh, you know encourage encourage employee productivity achieve your cost savings as well with enhanced workforce planning uh, by focusing on the data and then obviously building in a solid talent pipeline by understanding what are the gaps are there what kind of talent you should look for into the market and also work on your skill based hiring programs as well yeah thank you sujanta uh, i think rashmi again there is a lag at your end hello okay uh, is it any better now yes i yes i i missed out in the previous what you were saying uh, 
All right. Uh, no, I was just saying that I think uh, if data is utilized well, I think it can be an asset in any organization. So yeah, Absolutely. I think you have put it across in a way. light on that uh, Suchandra. Uh, also, uh, Suchandra, you were uh, talking about um, adapting the technology when we uh, talked about the hybrid setup, how to measure the performance and uh, the productivity. Uh, you just mentioned that why don't you use the technology, right? Uh, so uh, is there any uh, specific tool or technology that you'd recommend using to improve HR functions? I think I, I just spoke about this in one of my previous uh, webinars um, also uh, on HR tools. I mean, there are a lot of HR tools available in the market right now. And every organization needs to understand what, what kind of a tool do you need? Because no, it's like, like, you know, every shoe doesn't fit everyone, right? So you need to understand your requirement and then go for your uh, HR tools and technologies, right? So obviously we are looking, if you look at HRIS systems, HRIS systems is being used by everyone. And, uh, but what kind of HRIS systems will you be looking at? Are you a smaller organization? Are you a larger organization? What is the need for you at that precise point in time, or maybe two for two years as, an, as we are growing? What is the need or what is the use that you are looking at from an HRIS system? So whenever you are looking at tools like HRI systems, you, if you have a lot of um, high volume hiring, you're looking at an ATS system. Uh, if you are looking at doing a lot of learning management, right? you would like to do a lot of training, you have a larger workforce, then you cannot do your learning and development and tracking on Excel sheets. You might want to implement your learning and uh, you know LMS systems, uh, development systems, right? Uh, when you're doing your HRMS, you're also looking at performance management systems you're talking about over here. Again, the market is flooded with various different kinds of tools and technologies. And I always keep on saying that everything is available in the market, a lot of various different tools, technologies. What you have to look at is what is your need, which are the top priority ones that you want to use, and what is the integration that is there? So I think the top things that any organization today needs is like maybe a good HRIS system, which will help you uh, to manage and track your employee data because at the end of the day, you the data is there everywhere. You need to be able to collect, generate the data and keep it somewhere, right? To be reused in various different your people strategies and analytics. Uh, the same data of people needs to be linked to your candidate or talent management system. So you your ATS, then your learning management systems and performance management systems. I think these are the four most used important, you know, tools today that any organization would want to invest in. But then again, look for what is the integration that they have with each other because you don't want always standalone data because your data sensitivity will be gone. So always look for tools which will be able to talk to each other and we'll have one uniform data uh, source of data. Uh, there are other tools like, you know, uh, I think those are good to have one sort of organizations. Uh, larger organizations are looking at implementing, which is like the latest ones, which um, does your employee engagement and measures of employee satisfaction. So there are a lot of um, tools have now come into the picture, which you can uh, define wherein they talk and get an employee pulse and a sense. They are they're created in such a way wherein we don't have to go ahead and run our uh, employee satisfaction surveys and kind of get data and try and analyze it. It is it's all done all done by the tool. So engagement, if you're looking at increasing your employee engagement and understanding how your strategies are being are, are effective, then a good software to work with will be an employee engagement platform. So you can work on your employee satisfaction and retention as well. And definitely when you start doing your data analytics, please use your data analytics tool for identifying your trends and patterns, which will help you because these things cannot be done on a manual basis. So you definitely will need certain tools to help you with that. 
Sure, Suchandra. Thanks for sharing your suggestions here. Uh, in the meantime, uh, dear participants, uh, uh, you can start putting across your questions in the Q&A option uh, while we continue our discussion with uh, Ms. Suchandra today. Uh, so, um, Suchandra, my next question is about uh, the DIB. Uh, so, what are the initiatives that organizations should implement to improve the workplace culture and promote diversity, equity, inclusion, and belongingness? I think, see, when we talk of uh, workplace culture, so first of all, you have to define what does culture mean to you in the organization. And when we say culture means in the organization, it is not about what your top management thinks, but what it means to each and every person in the organization. So if you're trying to understand what is your existing culture, and if you want to make a change to the culture, do a culture study first. What is it? Try and understand. What is it that is happening? Are you in open culture? Do you, do you, do, does the employees feel that, no, we are very autocratic, we are not able to open up, uh, or it is like so open that nothing gets done in the organization, right? It, it, it's so free form. So as an organization moves in or you know matures, the culture also keeps on changing. The culture is not static. And if you look at it, the culture is different at each and every level of the organization as well. So when you talk to a uh, you know your base, lower level of uh, starting phase of people in the organization, they might be having a different culture pod. So we call it as start calling it as a culture pot. Understand what are your culture pots. And if there is some unique culture you want to have across all the pots, set them out under your visions, under your culture guidance, and work towards some strategies which will enable you to have this, you know, in all the pots. For example, if we are a customer focused organization, how we become customer focused on each and every stage? What is it that we should be doing at into our day to day work in our roles to make us more customer focused? Correct. Uh, again, when we come to talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, again, what does it mean to you as an organization for this world? What are you looking at from a diversity? What are you looking at to build in from equity and inclusion, inclusion right? So for, for me, maybe as an organization, I'm looking at when I say diversity, I might say that, hey, you know what? I want to improve my gender ratio as, at this point in time. I have a, I am in, I am into maybe say manufacturing or I'm a sales organization. I have a very uh, low count of female employees. I want to increase it. So my diversity definition happens from there. Now, the second is, when you talk about a diversity definition is done, where do you, how do you go about improving your diversity? When you talk about improving the diversity, why it has not happened till now? What kind of cultural changes should you bring in to do that? So very, very much in a sales organization, in, in, in India, a lot of families, a lot of females don't get into the sales stores, which is on the field sales stores, because it's a hard job. Because there is no, no, you know, no safety. Because there is no, uh, a lot of the challenges are there. So if I am looking at increasing the diversity, I have to work and provide the necessary support for the diversity to happen, so that people or employees, females are, are convinced to join us as an organization. When we talk about equity, how are we defining an equity in the organization? So again, I have to think about. Equity means being heard, right, for everyone across. How do you bring in participative, participativeness of people uh, of, I will say, uh, you know, uh, in a meeting, uh, you know, if you're looking at an, uh, building and leadership program, do you have equal representation of both the genders in your organizations or not? Are you able to build programs which will focus equally on both of them and improve them, right? So, as an organization, I need to understand what is the definition of for each of this and how do I, do I go about building my strategies to improve your uh, diversity, inclusion, equity, inclusion, and belongingness, right? Um, I think one very basic thing every organization needs to do is make people understand, everyone, what this means as an organization. We can't just keep it as a strategy and keep it. 
we need to get everyone involved like you can run off workshops you can do training let first people understand what does it mean and then take everyone has to take ownership of it you cannot build it from the top it has to be done from bottom level up when you start talking about diversity inclusion belongingness and culture as well at the end of the day sure so sure. yeah uh, i'll just take up one more question and then now probably sure. we'll head towards audience questions sure. uh, so uh, um my next question is about lnd strategies uh, because mm -hmm. you also mentioned that how the various factors are affecting mm -hmm. the recruit this year mm -hmm. so my question is uh, what kind of learning and development strategies you would recommend implementing in order to reskill and upskill the employees um i think i was having an interesting debate on this on reskilling and upskilling so uh when we were talking about reskilling and upskilling it is not about just getting training programs done right for some someone in the organization i can have multiple training programs but there of no use if i don't have opportunity within the organization after the training for them to actually implement it correct most of the time in projects and others as well what we have seen everybody your client will be asking hey i need a sme i don't need somebody who is just trained what will you do then by upskilling an employee so when you are doing so whenever you are looking at upskilling and reskilling your job related training should also focus on building the skills and knowledge by giving them the right opportunities also to put them to use otherwise there is no use of doing an upskilling and reskilling program uh there is a lot of things that you can encourage people to do when we i mean that is also about uh, giving them that access to the learning factor um e learning courses online platform is one way of looking at it dedicated curated programs that you can build with uh, technical training or soft skills training whatever is required because i'm i'm just talking it more on a generic way not from a technology perspective uh so uh, you can say that you have a factory worker right uh, who is just doing a uh, worker job you might want to move them into a supervisor level now that person has been doing that job for the last 15 years they don't know how to move forward but they still have a potential you can put them into some supervising program a uh, soft skills program for them upskill them and move them to the next level and that's how you do program and growth right we often think about upskilling reskilling more from a uh, technology perspective by because adding on one more layer of technology like you know ai has come somebody wants to learn new ai chat gpt has come we want to learn chat gpt and go to the next level of coding or some new uh, platform has come we want to learn that but we we have to extend it off to the other sectors and industries as well and i think there is lot of upskilling reskilling which is happening on the other sectors as far i have seen my friends in the industry talk about it uh, one uh, i will not say upskilling and reskilling but it is also about developing people is what we are talking about so uh, as organization we should be looking at offering mentorship and coaching programs because that is something that is very important you can start doing it by identifying people within the organization to be buddies and coaches internally you know one on one support and guidance from your experienced colleagues so you know a lot of larger organizations have those you know coaching or buddy programs it will it's and mentoring i will not say coaching but mentoring programs which takes care not only of your technical uh, or i will say functional training but also of your um, other soft skills and other aspects of the organization training as well collaboration and rotation of employees at various different job levels an organization who is able to do with cross skilling and rotate people will have their employee retention also on a higher basis so you if when you are implementing those programs when you are looking at uh, giving opportunities for people to move from one team to another learning new skills developing themselves 
these are some of the best practices which will also be you know contributing toward your employee experience and engagement as uh, as such well. uh another way i think is giving opportunities to your employees to attend conferences and industry seminars and webinars uh not many organizations do it but they out they do it only at a certain level it is not part of a program that is given to everyone so uh, i think it is it's important to identify uh, where people can go in for cross industry collaborations learn from the industry from the market and bring it back into the organization uh, recently i think some very interesting conversations were coming up about talent when you are talking about and this will be can become a part of your learning and development strategies in future is about exchange programs like we have student exchange programs of employees within organization and, and it is not like your like contract labels or like the contract work or that we are doing our consulting work but genuinely if i am trying to run a project right i'm trying to do something and i'm looking at putting people together if i know that there are people in another organization who might be able to help me do this i can bring them over on a project basis get them to do this but it is not like i'm giving a requisition into the market and getting talent from a consulting and all work to do the work for but this is something very high end projects that you are looking at you are looking at exceptional talent there are talent out available in the market and this also will be addressing maybe a part of your moonlighting and all uh, you know uh, job that is currently you know happening right now uh, when an organization can come into the picture to curate opportunities which can be exchanged from organization to organization it's, it's slightly different i think we had this conversation in our internal group but i mean think of it in a larger gig workers marketplace uh how open will you be to have your employees do gigs official gigs with other organization uh yeah i think so so that those are the few things that i can think about right now to share with you sure so thank you so much for sharing all your insights here uh i think we'll now head towards the audience questions i can already see few of them uh, lined up here Uh, so one of our attendee, Miss Ankita, would uh, like to know: in hybrid work culture, how do we monitor the work from home and office attendance presence? <laughs> and also, if employees are not adhering to the hybrid culture, should we take any action? Okay. Um. So when you talk about monitoring, so I think I I mentioned right, companies need to take support of. technology to do those kind of monitoring in a hybrid culture right you can have a time tracking software you can have an attendance tracking software a uh, lot of organizations have uh, you know implemented this software in employees laptops to understand how much they are spending on on a particular site or you know doing their work as well so if you are very keen in a hybrid model to do the monitoring part then you have to start using technology now if you are not happy with the hybrid and people uh, you know uh, working please don't give them hybrid get them back to office simple i mean it it is it is organization comfort right if i don't i'm if i am not able to manage hybrid i will ask people to come to office and work and that's a choice totally i mean that's how if what kind of an employee experience you want to build that's up to you how much of flexibility you want to give how much of productivity you want from them is absolutely dependent upon an organization culture it you cannot restrict it you cannot mandate things now in today's work environment no i have i will i will say that no employee is unless and until they don't have options in the market would want to be a uh, force to do something which is not aligned to their current priorities in life sure to do that uh, i think uh, this answers the question thank uh, yes yes i think you are taking up the questions please go ahead with this <laughs> yeah okay 
So I'm just going to Akash has a question. What are the best practices for an HR to engage remote employees effectively, and how can belongingness belongingness be created in remote work structure? Okay, I think the um, see the remote work structure is always very challenging. But then it again depends upon how often. Um, so when we talk about engaging, I would certainly suggest using some engagement software tool because. you cannot always directly understand what the employee is doing or thinking correct so if you are engaging them with them with some kind of a software you will be able to uh, have feedback on a regular basis on on how what the employee is thinking whether the employee is happy uh, what is it that they are looking for and communication it the communication should be very much more frequent in a remote environment rather than in in an office or an hybrid model because it's important that they feel that there is a the kind what kind of a work they are doing what is the impact that they are creating what are kind of appreciation that you are doing uh is it reaching them or not and bring them on virtually on various different modes in various different ways uh it's a quite a challenging uh factor in a remote environment Once in a while, you have to maybe you know get them together on a physical space to build that belongingness and bonding, uh, and then again let them go back into a remote structure. But if not, I don't think that it is possible to do a hundred percent remote and be very engaged with the employees at the same time. Sure, uh, uh, I hope that answers the question. Uh, uh, Suchanda, am I audible now? Yes, you are audible. Yes, very much audible. All right, thank you. So one of our attendee would also like to know. Uh, I think Mr. Kunal. Uh, the question is, what are the core skills that we as HR need to master in twenty twenty three? Ah, okay. Core skills for HR to master will be um, technology. I guess I think one of the most. Uh, important thing for us is to be very much hands on on what kind of tools and technologies uh that is needed to be more business focused today hr is no more a support function or anything we have to be more business focused you have to understand what is the business needs what does business want and more on the soft skill side i will say communication and empathy i think that's very important part of our role to understand what what employees are feeling and be genuinely you know understand their the needs understand what they want because see, at the end of the day as an hr also we are also an employee think of it always in that term how would you feel if you put yourself in those shoes how would you feel if you are in that situation and when you do that it also helps you be more human towards them most of the time i have seen that because we are an hr and i think and that is it is something that i always tell everyone that think that you as an hr is also an employee of the organization what is it that you are going to do is also going to be applicable to you right so always think from those lines that as an employee what is it that you would want from the organization and the same thing should go out to the rest of the employees as well because you put yourself there then you can create the best possible a uh, culture best possible uh, engagement practices and everything out over there so start thinking from those point of view start building on your communication start building on learning more of the tools and technologies that think in use today and as a child we, we also need to keep on upskilling and reskilling ourselves so if you are only doing talent or skills or hiring start looking at what are the other things that uh you know you need to know from an hr perspective you might want to do as learn about hr partnership uh business focuses people analytics data analytics strategies and so on and so forth sure sitan i hope that answers the question uh our next one is um it's uh, from mr vyas uh so it's a pretty elaborated one so i'll just mm-hmm. take uh so the question is uh more of it's a comment is uh, the labor act introduced the idea of employee well being 
but mm-hmm. after the pandemic it became a buzzword that hr and employers are now attempting to hype or give more importance uh, surely always a people focused business would prioritize employee wellness uh, even though we claim that ratings were given earlier without metrics uh, that isn't uh, incorrect because we followed normalization procedures to ensure accurate feedback Uh, which was given and the proper members were rated so is that just a way of saying that now that new technology has arrived uh, we are doing things better so can you please share your thoughts on this okay i'm going to reading the question um see uh business will always be focused on achieving profit see no organization can survive if you don't focus on your profit margins right but then again we have to understand that you are achieving your results and goals from the people itself right so your assets are always people now the focus on employee wellness is more or we talk more about it because what we have for companies have realized is also the amount of effort and i'm not talking about larger organizations so you will have to see larger organizations people have been you know continue with the organizations for 5 years 10 years 15 years for various different reasons but think about where lot of people movement keep on happening because it's very difficult for smaller organizations to do employee wellness or prioritize employee wellness versus business focuses okay uh rating yes were being given earlier also without matrices larger organizations we when we i have handled volume with astrazeneca with alcatel lucent and all where obviously we used to do normalization procedures and everything but i'm also talking about smaller organizations right say for example in a startup organization you will you be able to do a bell curve or a rating approximation you cannot because everybody is focusing or giving their best so how would you actually do rating and feedback to them it boils down more to the fact that do you have very clear deliverable milestones outlined map to their uh, you know role or not have they been achieving that or not so when we talk about ratings when we talk about the current tools and technologies they help us to manage this part of the feedback process this part of rating in a much better way than some of the traditional tools that we have been using if i am able to answer that i hope that answers the question right yeah, sure sure suchin right that's i hope uh, uh, that helps as well uh, so uh, suchin so i'll just take a few more questions uh, uh, dear yeah. participants uh, due to interest of time we may not be able to take up each and every question of yours uh, we really uh, are sorry for that uh, but we will definitely get back to you with your questions uh, before in this session i'll just take a couple of more questions for the day uh, so uh, one of our attendee miss dipya has a question for us mm-hmm. the question after upskilling what are the ways to retain the people give them opportunity to use that upskilling in the in your current organization right if you have upskilled them but you don't have opportunity for them then definitely they will be looking out so that's the reason when i was talking about your upskilling and reskilling i say that your upskilling and reskilling program should be focused not only on giving them the skills but also using them in a in the work so they should be able to gain or become an sme from there on because what matters to them is have i practically used it or not i can take up a data analytics course but if i am not putting it into work what is the use for my or my combined personal learning and growth or even for the organization so as an organization whenever i am focusing on creating in upskilling reskilling program i should also have opportunity and avenues to deploy that individual that person within those roles and keep on improving them on those particular skills and areas all right i hope that helps divya uh, thanks suchindra for taking it up uh, one of our attendee mr sunil would like to know how do we ensure or encourage employees for their participation in 
employee engagement activities or maybe the best way of doing this so my question will be mr sunil who runs your employee engagement activities does the hr does or you have have the people participation as well i think the best way to run your employee engagement is get people to take up ownership have those clubs those book clubs and other forums whatever participation you want from them come from them itself right when we from hr we say hey you know today we will be having a employee engagement activity we will be doing something they will just come and sit over there they are not interested but you if you are able to identify a, a very collaborative workforce is everybody has talent in various different ways build that music club within the organization give an owners to somebody build that book club within the organization make someone a cultural spark right so when you start doing that people automatically will find and attract other people i worked in i think this has been a very startup culture for me as well when i started working with the startup that we identified in as a part of our onboarding who has what alternate skills and we used to write them up right front in the introductions when we used to send them out on slack this person apart from whatever you know your uh, work qualification is good at badminton is good is a has been a football captain is good at a music singing has a pet has interest in mountaineering adventures everything now what that used to help us is identify other set of people who will join along with them and do some lot of external adventures from the organization so they used to form their own as i was mentioning you know culture pods interest pods and that used to help people get engaged with others people stay in organizations when they find likewise vibes in the organization i am not going to leave an organization if i have a very good set of people friends and activity that i can do along with them because my 10 12 hours is spent in an organization either virtually or physically all right absolutely well said ms sujanda thank you so much for answering that uh, i think with this we are now coming to end of the discussion uh so uh if there are any questions pending uh with your participants please don't worry we will uh, definitely get back to you like i already mentioned and also you can reach out to us through our great tribe community the link is already given here so basically great tribe is a knowledge sharing platform you can put across your questions there and seek answers from your hr peers and the industry experts as well um uh, once again i would like to thank ms suchandra for uh, uh, the session you have certainly given us a lot of insights on various focus areas of hr in 2023 uh, also thank you uh, all the attendees as well who has joined the session today and for making it a huge success so if you have any more questions related to this session uh, or related to the topic uh, please write back to us on the given mail id it is rakhi gautam at the rate of creative.com and we will surely get back to you so we will see you soon at the uh, another uh, next session with another interesting topic uh, till then uh, have a great time stay safe thank you thank you so much rashmi and thank you to all the participants and for the really nice interesting question whatever is not answered i will try and see if we can collaborate with rakhi and respond back to you as well thank have you. a great day Thank you.